and in the reading of this, I thought perhaps some people should go to hell. Hello and welcome to another episode of Cheap Smut. My name is Katie Mizell. And my name is Carl Mizell. And this is a podcast that really, really just showed up. How are you? Yeah, here? Yep. We're yep. showing up. Yeah, we're showing up. But <laughs> hey, that's that's what heroes do. Hey, you know what? It is. And when you need us, we'll be there. And not all heroes wear capes. Um, something, 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 something. Himbos, something, something. See Rochelle. Rochelle. <laughs> yeah how you doing see rochelle we hope you're well how are you um i'm pretty good i'm pretty good i mean i'm not really going to talk about the mental health stuff so <laughs> i'm going back to therapy <laughs> Woo! Woo! i'll talk about it more later maybe i don't know um but i'm otherwise good i'm good uh it was a good day it was today was a really nice day it was a de- it was a pretty decent day mm-hmm. the boy the boy child at one point we were outside mm-hmm. uh, in the front yard me and the t- the kids you were walking the idiot mm-hmm. uh himbo jones and uh the the girl child wanted to go inside but he wanted to stay outside so i got he's like can i have the camping chair i was like mm-hmm. yeah and he grabbed his camping chair got a little one of the little mini cans of diet coke and got his tablet mm-hmm. and then he asked me for some goldfish <laughs> yeah and then his little six-year-old mind <laughs> just thought, he goes dad is this a good life i said what do you mean he said being outside in a chair with Diet Coke and goldfish in my tablet watching videos, is that a good life? <laughs> and I was like, what do you think? He goes, one million percent, that's a good life. <laughs> yes. He was just, th- like, he had no idea that you could do yep. that yep. outside, yep. which kind of circles back. And I tried to explain to him very TLDR the conversation you and I were having last night about cell phones Mm -hmm. specifically how like if you would have shown eight-year-old me like i'm Mm -hmm. i'm in that perfect age where this is this is what science fiction promised me yes and it's here Mm -hmm. and i use the example of like i remember hearing the first time i heard love shack going wow this is a great song and my mom said i can't believe they're still making music (laughs) she couldn't just get her phone out and show me yeah rock lobster yeah or whatever you just i just had to take her fucking word for it and it's just it's so wonderful that my kid has already the opportunity to just be outside in nature, chilling, relaxing, getting some fresh air while also just relaxing yep. and, and, and watching his silly videos. And, yep. and, and I, I love that. I love that for on him. On his portable screen. On his portable screen. But like that is like that is literally the kind of shit that we were promised by. I mean, they, 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 it's been called Star Trek technology before, but like Star Trek at all, mm-hmm. you know, stuff sci-fi like sci-fi technology. Sci-fi technology is here, and so I always try to be conscientious of that and try to appreciate mm-hmm. that we're able to do that. We're able to do this. Yeah, I, 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 I make a podcast mm-hmm. with my com- my laptop yep. computer. Yep. We make a better sounding radio show from our living room. Yeah. Than people 50 years ago made in big boots with shit tons of equipment yes. when they were the pinnacle of entertainment. I, I rec- we record it mm-hmm. and then I just send it off into the wirelessly yep. Yep. into the world and then yep. you get to hear exactly. it. Exactly. It is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yep. But again, the, 50 but, years ago, but yeah. then I get mad at my cell phone. I get mad at it. Mm-hmm. I throw it every once in a while. It's a miracle. And I throw it. Mm-hmm. I've had multiples. I couldn't even ret- I couldn't even tell you how many of those miracles yep. that I've had. Yep. It, I want a new one. I, every time. Yeah. <laughs> I have two. You do? And I hate both of them, but I hate one more. And I hate the work phone more because it's an Apple phone. Mm-hmm. But yeah, anyway, I didn't mean to go on that that tangent. I just I I was it was so nice for him to have that moment. And then it was great for me to just be able to be appreciative of the fact that we've come so far. But I told him I was like, buddy, I didn't I didn't get to just watch videos on a tablet when I was a kid. And you would looked at me. He looked at me like I, I sprouted a second head. Yep, it was crazy. Anyway, yep. enough enough of the digression. What are we talking about this week? This week I have prepared a selection of wild shit (laughs) that's all halloween 
funk funkiness we're bra- like it's like the it's like the stinky cheese uh to start off spooky smuttober strong so we're gonna get real weird with it this week oh i cannot wait this is this this i think is when we're at our best oh absolutely yes um so do you want do you want to just jump right into the first one or do you want to maybe pick no no you you it, you you run the ship here. okay well then we are going to start off with faulty by nicole parker okay um this was recommended to us by unfortunate reads i believe and uh I, it's been on my tbr for a long time <laughs> now if okay if it came from cassie yes if it came from cassie i and i the one word title mm-hmm. and usually these and, and this is all pretty much sentient object correct oh yeah okay so i i i like being able to try and guess oh you want to guess what it is at what this is oh, supposed please. to be no yeah. I, I i i mean i'm i i don't have a guess yeah but i just mean like like okay stuffed okay i know what stuffed is gonna be or mm-hmm. unhinged okay sure. that kind of gives you a hint but faulty faulty yes i have two guesses and i'm not going to tell you i but i'm on the honor system i will tell you if i got it right okay I believe you. Okay. All right. So this is book two in the Kyle verse series. There are <laughs> so many. The Kyle verse. Kyle verse. Yes. Mm-hmm. We're already off to a swimming. So start. fucking good. Oh, okay. Um, the gym verse. The, yeah. The Kyle verse series. Book one is called Rake. <laughs> and I'm assuming it's not about a really, really good baseball player. No. Nor is it about uh, an, like an overly or like a womanizing man. Mm-hmm. It's about a rake. Yeah. Ooh, li- I like that. Yeah. Look at you digging way back. Oh, yeah. Um, so this is Faulty. Yeah. Book two in the Kyle Burst series. For our triple T's, I just took the content page right from Nicole. Oh, and, and before we get started, uh, although the, the, the show notes will probably say this, we don't. I'm not going to have the sh- all the triple T's for a bunch of stories in, in the show notes. So, uh, reader caution advised. First and foremost, this is a sentient object romance, which means people will get down and dirty with a sentient object. But everything is consensual. In no particular order, there is penetrative and oral sex, some restraining, tickling, cursing, blindfolding, flavored cum, masturbation, hand on neck, no choking, and multiple partners. Okay, I'm not feeling good about my guesses. No, no, but no. Once once it's revealed, I'll let you know if I got it. All right. So uh, this story is told from the perspective of our FMC. Her name is Chloe. We don't really get much information about her. At the start of the book, Chloe is in a secondhand shop on her lunch break, and she finds a toy from her childhood, something that makes her feel really nostalgic. And she goes to the counter to ask how much it is. And the guy behind the counter, who is like this really attractive, like good looking dude, that we just note that right out off the get right off the bat that he's like her type. Um <laughs> it's like, oh well brand a brand new one like that in box is gonna run you like fifty something dollars. And she says, Oh, I can't afford that. He gives her once over and she says like the look that he gives her is like assessing her soul. And he says, you know what? I have another one. You can have it for like $20. Um, but this one is defective. It's faulty. And she says, okay, that's fine. I mean, if even if it doesn't work, if it just sits on my shelf, that's fine. But the way he says this is like, almost flirtatious like implying something Mm -hmm. and she just thinks that he's maybe hitting on her she doesn't really know um but she buys this she takes it home she unboxes it she puts batteries in it and she wakes up her brand new (laughs) flurbo which is a furby for those of you who are (laughs) it's a furby so is this our m m c uh yeah Okay. Basically. Wasn't even close. <laughs> <laughs> what did you, oh, what were you thinking? Oh, uh, I, my first thought was a sentient earthquake. Um, fault. Faulty. Oh, my uh, God. And then I thought that something really funny. Uh, electrical. Oh, my God. That would be funny, too. Uh, but. Uh, yes. So many options. So many options. Um, so, anyway, she has bought a Flurbo, a Furby, if you guys remember those mm-hmm. from our childhood. And I think they were uh, re-released a, a few years ago with a few up, like uh, software upgrades and stuff. They're these creepy motherfucking things. They're like these little gremlin-y 
fur guys with big wide plastic eyes and like a beak not a mouth they have a beak and like big ears that flap back and forth and um, when I was a kid they were the big item for Christmas one year my grandma organized a phone tree because you could only get two of them from the J.C. Penny or the Macy's or wherever it was that she was ordering them. It <laughs> is the most patty thing. It is the most patty fucking thing. God love her. So she organized a phone tree to make sure that she could get enough of them to buy the hot toy for Christmas for all of her grandkids plus a few other children. Um, and she did that. We all got one. Can I pause real quick? Your Your grandmother, Patty, your grandma, Patty, was just it wasn't it was a teacher and but she was just super like about reading 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 always wanted you to read and i can just imagine her up in heaven going not like that Mm -hmm. not those books damn it fuck patty i'm not sorry (laughs) i'm not sorry i loved you so much and i continue to love you now but you were not without fault. No, no. You upper middle class white woman. <laughs> but she did instill in you a love of reading. But she that- did instill in me a love of reading. I have a wonderful picture of her reading, I want to say like Rudyard Kipling to me. So the Jungle Book yeah. when I was probably way too young for her to be reading the Jungle Book. But she just loved to, I loved to sit on her lap. Yeah. And she would read to me for as long as I wanted. And uh, now I read porn. Yeah. <laughs> for a living. And then tell people about and it. And tell people about it. <laughs> Love you, Patty. Um, anyway. So, oh, I skipped, a, I skipped a short section. Okay, so she goes back to work briefly. Mm-hmm. And she talks to her coworker, Kyle. Kyle is the recurring character throughout all of these books. He is the glue holding this universe together. He is the most open-minded and chill dude you have ever met and the universe rewards him handsomely for that chillness <laughs> either that or he is something much bigger <laughs> i was going to say but i love i love the idea of an entire universe of books centered around an ancillary character who's just the glue yeah i love the, i think that's what kyle is the wildness that just surrounds him yeah do that, Marvel Cinematic Universe, you cowards. Yeah, right? Exactly. Everything from the perspective of, like, you know. The waitress in the first Avengers yeah. movie that Captain America shoes out. Oh. She was I, She was an actress I recognized, too. Yeah. I was kind of hoping that she would have more in the future of the, that series. Anyway, Kyleverse. Kyleverse. So, anyway. Um, so, she talks to Kyle about the Flurbo. And Kyle says that he thinks fl- Flurbos are kind of creepy. But she's like, oh, but I like them. They're cute. And they kind of remind me of my childhood. Anyway. So, she goes home. She plug- She puts batteries in this thing. It wakes up. It says hi to her. It, spe- it speaks Flurbanese. And there is... <laughs> There is a Fleurbanese dictionary linked in the back of this book, so I'm guessing that Nicole came up with a minimal Mm -hmm. vocabulary for it. But it said the first thing it says is "Hey, Uta," um, which means "Hey, beautiful," and uh, it calls (laughs) her that from the moment it sees her. It just calls her beautiful from the moment it sees her. Um, so the so Furbo already knows what a book boyfriend is supposed to do. I guess. Okay. I um I call Flurbo it. Oh, Flurbo. Thank you. For the entire fair they it it because it doesn't have a I don't think it has a gender like that. That's fair. So yeah. you know. Anyway, so she has a quiet night. She eats her dinner. She watches some TV. She goes to sleep. Um, she wakes up in the middle of the night to a seven foot. Flurbo standing at the edge of her bed no. telling her that she needs to wake up she understands Fleurbanese when she's sleeping but only when she's dreaming or sleeping or whatever this is does she understand what it's saying now, it is, says, is like, it a seven f- just just a larger Flurbo or is it a hot large no flurbo? it's just a larger Flurbo I support this I do too it's fully just a big Flurbo and um it says, no sleep, beautiful, or something like that in Fleur Benise, And she freaks out, runs, and hides in the bathroom. A reasonable response. Exactly. Until she has a minute to breathe and calm down and convince herself that that's, that was probably a nightmare or something. She pokes her head out. It is not there. 
anymore so she goes back to bed and in the morning it's sitting on the counter on the shelf where she left it so she thinks that it was just a nightmare she tells kyle at work about that nightmare and uh he offers to come over and protect her from the big scary flirbo he's a flirt oh kyle is a flirt he's such a flirt um that night she has dinner and she like invites Flurbo to come to the kitchen. So, like she brings Flurbo to the kitchen <laughs> while you, she cooks. Do you want to like hang out? Yeah, what? basically just like chats with it. You're supposed to talk to a, a Flurbo or a Furby so that they can learn English. So she just sort of like hangs out with it and it watches movies with her or TV or whatever until she goes to sleep. She leaves, she puts it back on the um, shelf and she goes to sleep. And that night, she wakes up with the seven foot tall Flurbo in her bedroom again saying no sleep beautiful and eventually it says that it wants to play oh yeah except what it says is i play you and the limited vocabulary of the Flurbo made this entire thing way more disturbing to me <laughs> way more disturbing <laughs> of all of the books i am going to tell you about today This one is the most disturbing to me personally. Oh, yeah. Well, because you're... Because of the big flurbo. Well, because of the big flurbo. And also, like, I mean, the complete lack of clear communication. Mm -hmm. Like, I I know we've talked about this. And I just mean in terms... Like, with our children. Like, when children are learning to talk, sometimes they'll have an umbrella. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, of like one like one word yes like our both of our kids use the word spicy mm-hmm. for a ver- like they would say cookies were spicy they would say milk was spicy, but like things they didn't particularly yep. care for like yep because they associate spicy with bad yep and then it evolves into spicy being a sensation in the mouth that you don't like yep. but that could also mean like the cold of peppermint exactly or you know yep. yeah uh, all those things so it's just even it's when they do it, it's eh, kind of cute, sometimes a little frustrating. But when a seven foot tall Flurbo does it in your dreams, mm. that's ups. That's that's unnerving. Yeah, it's really upsetting, especially well, so because in the book it is speaking in Flurbanese and then the translation is in italics next to the sentence. Okay. So you're reading all of that, too. And it's a lot of like, yeah, me, you, oh, li, ma. So you're just like, holy fuck, that is a toy. <laughs> I play you. You like tickle? <laughs> Motherfucker. Now, first of all, I am not I am not a tickle person. No. I don't like to be tickled. And I the people who find any kind of like pleasure in being tickled, I think that you should be given some kind of special position after the world ends because you're a different fucking breed you're you are more than me (laughs) no if if you derive pleasure from tickling you would probably survive torture yeah like like that's what i like exactly that's what i think because like to me tickling is torture so like if you can (laughs) if you can survive tickling to the point where not only you survive it you enjoy it yeah you probably could get through some other (laughs) terrible shit yep because yep. to me, tickling is the fucking worst. If you ever want to torture me for information, just tell me you're going to tickle me. Uh, yep. And I'll be like, give me yep. paper, pen. How do you want to do this? You want to. <laughs> exactly. You wanna, do you want to. I can dictate. I can just. You got yeah. a voice recorder, like a <laughs> voice memo. Yeah. I'll just. Whatever you want. Camera. I'll, I'll, yeah. Video record. I'll, I'll draw you a fucking map. Yep. This camera. This camera. This. Where do you want me to look? I, <laughs> yeah, you fucking tickle me, though. <laughs> so anyway. This Flurbo says it wants to play. She's like, okay. And then one of its ears like grows and it extends it to cover her eyes Uh, and blindfold her. And then it's just the sensation of the synthetic fur like tickling around her body, petting and playing with certain parts. (laughs) Then it becomes sexual. He starts. It starts playing with her nipples. No. And then eventually. No. It becomes sexual. I know. And then eventually it rubs one out of her. Yeah, I bet it does. Yeah, it, op- it most certainly does. And uh, when she's done, when she finishes, it asks if she completed. I think. <laughs> did or you some, arrive? Yeah. Did you complete or something to that effect? And she's like, oh, yeah, no, I definitely did. And then she falls asleep with it standing in the corner 
<laughs> of her room, this giant seven foot Flurbo. And I was like, no, Flurbo, that's so no. disturbing. Please don't get out of my room. Get out of my room. God. So awful. But she falls, she falls asleep. She wakes up the next morning. It's not there. It's on the, the shelf where she left it. And it's clean. <laughs> she does note that it is clean. She goes to work. And she tells Kyle, and he is like, no shit, really? What was it like? Because Kyle is, again, just down, just down. She tells Kyle she had uh, sexual relations with her giant Flurbo, and he was like, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> so he's down for it for everything, and he was very curious. Um, she goes home that night uh, to hang out with Flurbo and the first thing she says to him is hey how do I make you get big <laughs> like how do I make you get big and it says a bunch of things in Flurbanese but she doesn't understand it and she says okay so I'm going to talk to you when I fall asleep and you come to my dreams I'm going to talk to you then when I can understand you yes yes cool she falls asleep that night wakes up completely forgets to ask a single question because the horn is upon her <laughs> And so she, they just get right down to it. Furbo asks if they, if she wants to play again, and she says yes, and uh, it eats her out <laughs> with a beak. I know. Okay, so the, yes, to the beak, uh. and I don't, I can't remember if it was plasticky or if it felt like. And it, it vibrated because, no. of course, it did. It vibrated. But my big question was, how did it get down there? Because Furbies can't bend over. Like, mm -hmm. it's just like a big cone of plastic. How did it even get there? <laughs> it also, at some point, it has, like, it uses its claws to either, like, take off her, try to take off her clothes or try mm -hmm. to take her, her sheet down or something. But it can't manage it because <laughs> it's not that dexterous. Yeah. And I was like, how is it even doing that? Because the claws were just little plastic mm. nubbins attached to the bottom of the plastic cone. Like, it's not. How did it do any of that? I love this is listeners. This is something that I've loved about my wife since I've known her. And that is you will present to her a wild buck wild scenario. And she will find the weirdest thing to call the biggest question. <laughs> it's true. It's not that the Flurbo becomes seven feet tall and wants to have yeah. sex with her. Yeah. None of that. That's not it. It's how does it move? How do you get down there? <laughs> how does it move? Not but Nicole not Parker. how does not how does he embiggen and visit her in her <laughs> dreams? <laughs> embiggen. I'm sorry, you were saying about Nicole. Nicole Parker did a really, really good job of just avoiding that. Just like any description of how any of that may have happened. Pfft, no, no we, we don't need to know. And, and we don't I love exactly. It. I love it. We do. I mean, we talked. We talked about that uh, at length in uh, the episode about Earth yeah. by Holly Wilde. Yes, because and, and it's something that you loved, and something that I love as well, which is just trusting that the reader will be in into enough into what you've presented. Mm -hmm. That all the other ancillary shit won't matter. Exactly. And I, yes. think, I think that's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. I love it. I loved everything about it. I loved this. I mean, again, of all of the books I am presenting tonight, this is the one I found the most disturbing. Mm. And it's because of the Furby thing. Yeah. But again... I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Anyway, so she goes to work the next day and she tells Kyle that she forgot to ask the questions that needed asking. And he's like, OK, what if I come over tonight and we can hang out and watch TV and have some dinner? And when Flurbo shows up, I will remind you to ask the questions that need asking. And from there... How much or little I participate is up to you, but I'll be there to help you keep your brain enough to answer the questions or ask the questions. And she is just attracted enough to Kyle and intrigued by this whole situation that she's like, you know what? Yeah, come over later. Come over after work. So after work, they go to her house. <laughs> they have dinner. She introduces him to Flurbo. <laughs> 
Is and this Flair Bo? It's basically like, hey, this is Kyle. He's going to hang out with us tonight, and he's going to be here tonight when I go to bed. Are you okay with that? Basically, like, getting Fleur Bo's consent for whatever's going to happen later. <laughs> what is Fleur Benise for cock block? Right. <laughs> but Fleur Bo's down. Fleur Bo doesn't oh, care. Okay. So they have an enjoyable evening of television and dinner and whatever. And then they go to bed that evening. He just snuggles up um, Big Spoon behind her and they fall asleep. Fleur Bo does indeed arrive. And <laughs> Kyle prompts her to ask the questions because again she was not going to ask any of the questions <laughs> she was immediately horny and so she asks and Flurbo in his own Flurboy way basically says I show up when you're horny I show up when you when you want to have sex so apparently every night she's been having sex dreams and he's been in, he's been coming into her bedroom to wake her up to help her because she's been so horny and so unfulfilled. And she's like, oh, okay. So if I just ask you to have sex, will you just become big? And he says, yes. Yes, I will. Absolutely. He calls it best fun. Well, he's not yeah, wrong. Yeah, he's not wrong. It. Sorry. It's not wrong. It calls it, calls it best fun. And um, so after all of that is established and settled, she is still very horny. And so she tells Kyle that he can stay because it's late, but he can't touch. He can only watch. And then, I kid you not, she has sex with this giant Furby. Of course she does. Because of course she does. And first of all, okay, so Flurbo saying, be good girl, take it. No. Should be illegal. Should be a crime. No. <laughs> Should be a crime. I can't believe that Nicole Parker wrote that in a book. Somewhere Teddy Ruxpin is blushing. <laughs> Teddy Ruxpin would never. But second of all, just knowing, just knowing what Fleur Poe's dick looks like has put me on some kind of federal watch list. No. I swear to God. No. Because I, I shouldn't need, to, I shouldn't have this information inside of my brain. But I'm guessing that because you do, yes. Now I'm I have to, to, I have to disseminate it yeah. like the ring. I'm just gonna read the description. Okay. I guess it's a cock of sorts, but it seems to move like a prehensile tail. Oh, also, it rolled out of the battery compartment. <laughs> I know. I didn't like it either. <laughs> it's like a fucking scroll or something. Um, it's made of papyrus. <laughs> I guess it's a cock of sorts, but it seems to move like a prehensile tail. It's the same color as his fur, but smooth. Yet with the way it moves, it's not the hard plastic of some of its other parts. And, of course, it's huge. Well, yeah. I stare in horror and arousal as it snakes towards me. <laughs> I got to imagine no. that the, the horror and the snakes. Yeah. The horror and arousal wasn't split 50 50. No, no, but it, it, would, it couldn't have been. It, but it, it, it <laughs> but it definitely skewed towards arousal because she fucked it. It had to have because she did. She fucked that flurbo. So it fucks her. She loves it. And then when it finishes, it comes inside of her. And the cum is orange. Oh, boy. And Kyle also was there and watching and jacking off and talking through all of this. He's providing commentary where Flurbo can barely talk. And then when they're finished, Flurbo rolls it back up, I guess. And um, Kyle gets a wash warm washcloth to clean her up. But he can't help the curiosity of wondering what the orange cum tastes oh, like. Fuck it. And it tastes like an orange push pop. Uh, so now that's a thing that we all know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> <Okay>. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> they go to sleep. Happy spooky smuts Jesus over. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Satan truly is with us. <laughs> anyway, um, they go to sleep. The next morning, they wake up, they get ready. Kyle is just, like, re like ready to go. He's just, like, going to leave and um, head out first thing. And Chloe's, like, 
eh, you know what? But hey, Flurbo, want to have sex? And Flurbo just seven feet tall suddenly appears and they have a threesome and Chloe gets Eiffel Tower by Kyle and a giant Flurbo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Himbo, I don't know how you're sleeping through this. So she sucks the Flurbo's dick and it comes in her mouth and when they're all done, Kyle kisses her because it tastes so good. Oh. I was like, so oh, you, don't do that. You didn't mention snowballing in the triggers, tropes, and titillations. Oh, I forgot about that. I'm sorry. It's okay. I mean, I don't mind, but. Oh, well, it wasn't in the thing, so I, um, the, I quoted. Well, I guess, I, I mean, that's not really truly, I mean, I guess it might not truly be snowballing. I but. guess not really. No, I don't know. Either way, that was faulty. <laughs> no, wait, there, there is an epilogue. Of course. There's an epilogue. Always an epilogue. Outside of a coffee shop, Chloe runs into the guy from the secondhand store, the super hot dude. And she, she says hi to him briefly. And like as he walks away, she sort of bemoans the fact that he is so perfectly her type and she just wishes that she had the confidence to like ask him out and then he turns around and he asks how she's feeling about her flurbo and the subtext is basically uh yeah it gets giant and fucks me and i love it and <laughs> the guy is like oh that's fucking chill <laughs> do you want to maybe get a drink sometime and she's like yeah absolutely and then off they walk into the sunset but i guess he was very intrigued and or impressed by the fact that she was down with the, the flurbo thing i don't know either way that was faulty weirdest and most elaborate pickup i'm gonna sell her this haunted stuffed animal that fucks her mm. And then I'll just cross path. I'll, I'll make sure I cross paths with her, and then I'll act intrigued and ask her out and ask her out. Yeah, we're replacing the top of the list for the world's weirdest kink. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. But uh, irrespective of weird, we ain't gonna shame it. Mm-mm. What else? What other horrors do you have in that cell phone for me? Because I haven't been able to stop thinking about it for a year. I read Mummy, Sorry, Mummy, Sorry by Latrex and Nova. <laughs> I feel like you mentioned this on the I episode did. of Monster Mash with, with special guest Aaron Callahan. Because it's the funniest name ever. All right. Mummy, Sorry, Mummy, Sorry. Let's get into Colon, it. Colon. Oh, shit. An erotic FFM BDSM Halloween Night at the Museum. By Latrexa Nova. Okay. Oh my God, this book was so incredible. Okay, so Latrexa, as we know, is the queen of Halloween. And this book is included in her 13 Kinks of Halloween collection. You can get it for $2.99 as a standalone or through KU, or $9.99 for the, for the 13 Kinks collection, $16.66 to get that collection in Amazon paperback. The Triple T's, because this is a Latrexa book, are slightly more intense. BDSM, Submission and Subjugation, Impact Play with Hand and Tools, FFM, Cis slash Heterosexual slash Eternal slash Unknowable. <laughs> no, really, it doesn't have to be that big, are my Triple T's for this. Our FNC, FMC for this one, her name is Amanda. She is a high school science teacher of some kind. She teaches seniors. And at the start of this book, she is waiting outside of the museum for the seniors who are supposed to be coming for the overnight sleepover at the museum for Halloween that she has been so excited about. Isn't this so freaking cool? Like she even dressed up in her Miss Frizzle dress with bones on it. Yeah. This sounds awesome. It does sound. I, I, when I worked at the museum uh, in Flint, yeah. Years ago, we used to do that. I never, I never worked any of them, mm-hmm. but we used to do that, and it always seemed like a yeah. really awesome time. So, they have this whole like sleepover at the museum thing, and Amanda is getting the last of the phone calls from her students who are all canceling. A couple of them are probably legitimately sick because there is a flu going around, but the rest of them straight up are just canceling. 
and she is devastated. Well, yeah. Because, like, 13 kids, all of them canceled? This is a super cool thing that she wanted to do, but she's not going to do it by herself, you know? So I guess it's time to go home. So she tells the staff, Paul and Paula. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Paula. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Yeah, uh, that uh they won't be needed and they're like, "Okay, great. Cool. Free night off. We but we're going to need to like shut it down." And she asks if she can walk through while they do that at least so she can see the exhibits. Yeah, absolutely no problem. So she walks through, she sees everything she wants to see, and then on her way out, she b- passes the not yet open mummy exhibit they found a brand new sarcophagus and a bunch of canopic jars in perfect condition they got them in this museum blah 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 (laughs) it's not open yet but she decides she's gonna sneak in and look anyway it's all the the displays are almost done and everything is already out which makes no sense (laughs) doesn't have to make sense that's not what we're here for and she goes to look at everything as close as she possibly can. It's so cool. These like these actual canopic jars in perfect condition with all the little heads on them and everything. And as she's leaning over to get as good a look as she can, she loses her balance. She falls. She tries to catch herself on a pillar that's holding up one of these jar- jars. But the pillar, for whatever reason, is not attached to the ground. <laughs> and so she knocks it over. It's not load bearing. And she tries to catch the pillar or the jars that are on top of it, but she can't really catch either thing. Then that starts a domino effect of all of the pillars that are in this display. All of the jars go flying. And eventually one of them falls onto the sarcophagus, chips the sarcophagus, and damages the mummy inside. And she is running around trying to fix this all, clean it up. There's obviously no way to fix it. She's sobbing because she feels terrible. Like she has very mixed emotions about museums Mm -hmm. in general because we all do. But she still feels bad that she broke it all. And she eventually she just sort of like piles each of the jars up as best as she can. And it's just dusty remains. And she tries to like rub out the spot on the sarcophagus that got all scratched up. But she can't. She feels around on the mummy and notices there's like a crack in the chest of the mummy. And she's like, oh, fuck. (laughs) Uh, There is nothing. She feels terrible, but there's nothing that she can do. So she turns around to go find Paul and explain that she's going to have to like. I don't know, sell a kidney or something to get to help to pay off the museum. She's but get, better be more worried about the mummy's curse. Seriously, but well, she turns around and she runs face first into Anubis, the jackal-headed god of the dead. Um, <laughs> he is described as having like pitch black skin, yeah. like a night sky, jacked to hell, obviously in his full regal Egyptian garb with a jackal head in with that's all adorned and stuff. And he's, he's got his staff and he is angry. He is very angry because she has desecrated (laughs) the remains of that's my favorite mummy. (laughs) Someone who he has already judged, like they are already in the afterlife and now he is, she has desecrated their remains and now she needs to be punished for that. And he says that she he is here to fi- to make her am- to force her amends or to bring her amends as well that only life can re- can send a life back to the afterlife or something like that. And she first she thinks that that means that he's going to kill her. Mm-hmm. I know what show we're on, though. But I know what show we're on. Exactly. So the first thing that happens is she gets lifted off of the ground by invisible forces. And she is immediately like, ooh, I like this. So in in her head, as with <laughs> all Latrex's characters, secretly loves BDSM. <laughs> and, 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 is, <laughs> is a secret sub who goes another county over to get her ass beat every weekend. <laughs> Nubis is like, stop liking this. <laughs> right. This is punishment. <laughs> right. But um, so he first he I think he whips her with an actual whip and 
he asks her to apologize, but her apology is not good enough um, because it still has a qualifier. <laughs> you don't qualify. You just say you're sorry. You don't say but or you don't say I didn't know. You just and he's like not good enough. So then he turns her over his godly knee and um, spanks her a bunch of times. And eventually her apology is good enough. So he turns her back over again and uh, fingers her for being a good girl. I, God, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> just one record scratch after another in these books. <laughs> God. Well, of course there it was. Of course. <laughs> Where else was this going? I know, but I, I know what show we're on. I yeah. I thought I did. <laughs> but anyway, so he fingers her and then he fucks her face. <laughs> With frankly an unnecessarily large dick. Well, like from description, I know you're a god, buddy. I get it whatever but like it doesn't have to be an absolute bat you know yeah jesus what's it what do you like how how does that how does that how yeah how yeah no how like it, how eventually eventually she does have sex with him like obviously we're not yeah. so but, but see, at, at least that sort of makes sense because i know that a baby can pass through a vagina i mean that's true the jaw the jaw does mm. not have that much flexibility mm. yeah that's true. That's true. But anyway, so they, sh- they finish that sequence and then the uh, mummy <laughs> stands up oh. and it walks towards them. And he tells her that this. This is Kyle. Is Kyle. <laughs> this is Nefrusbeck. And she has been ripped from her place in the afterlife because her remains were destroyed. And that is all Amanda's fault. And this is what is left of her. She is nothing but a shell. And it, like this, this was horrible. <laughs> he was like, get down on your knees and apologize to oh, her. Thank Christ. Apologize to her. And so she does. And then he tells her to unwrap the mummy. Oh, so she does. She unwraps the mummy, and un- underneath is a mummy, exactly as you would expect it to be after all this time, mm-hmm. preserved but mummified. And she is kneeling down at its feet again, very repentant, apologizing, saying she will do whatever it takes. And he tells her to kiss her repentance onto the mummy's feet like to kiss the mummy's feet oh basically i I don't know oh i don't know yeah right so she leans down and she kisses the mummy's foot as soon as her lips make contact wherever she makes contact is revivified so she never actually kisses mummy flesh she keeps she kisses and it becomes mm-hmm. regular flesh and she keeps doing that all over her feet and all over her ankles and up her legs until Nefruspec is moaning and she's like oh fuck i probably should have done this from the top okay so she goes up to the top <laughs> wait of the like mummy. like moaning mum moan mum <laughs> like mummy moaning or like Aroused moaning. Aroused moaning. <laughs> I, I, uh, I took it as aroused moaning. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, uh. <laughs> so, uh, so she goes up to the top of the mummy and she's like, I'm sorry, I probably should have given you a mouth. And she kisses her. And then they do the, the uh, eventually this sequence was long and a lot of kissing. A lot of kissing of <laughs> yeah. all the body parts and a lot of licking and all of the stuff. Two hours later. But eventually she is once again fully revivified and Amanda is able to express a full apology. And she turns, Nefruspec turns to talk to Anubis. Like they, like they know each other. And he's like, well, yeah, I never should have seen you again after you passed through my realm, though. Like, the fact that you're here is really upsetting to me. She did this. <laughs> he's really mad. Like, he is the former yeah. god of death. Now he is the right hand of death. He's stepped down, but... He's like, I gotta change the sign. Yeah. <laughs> how many How many days without an incident? <laughs> zero. Suddenly zero, Amanda. Zero. You know what it was before? A sideways eight. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyway, he's mad, but Nefruspec points out that where he could be feeding both of them to the soul eater right now because they are both doing things that are pissing off gods by being where they're not <laughs> supposed to be in their own ways. Instead, he has offered to help them. And uh, I by bet, I bet, yeah. Yeah, and by helping them, she means that they must mix life and death together in order to gain the power they need to fix her mistakes. The seed of death and the womb of life must be mixed together. AKA he going to have to fuck her. Hmm. So Amanda or Amanda or Nef Nefruzbek. Nefruzbek. No, um Amanda. Amanda. Okay. He has to fuck Amanda. So he does. Nefruzbek very sweetly and gently guides her through the process of the dickening that could have killed her. You know, like this thing is huge, unnecessarily huge, but eventually they do get it in there. Good job. Real proud of all of you guys. And then Nefruspec gets down on her knees and starts licking basically both of them because he can't really move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. <laughs> you know, without, you know, perforating an organ or something. So, um, she gets down there and starts providing oral to S help to something. Yeah. To everything, everything in her She's path. She's trying to lubricate. Yes. And she is down. She is down for all of this. And, um, once Amanda gets close, they push everything down onto the ground. Nefruzbek is like grinding against Amanda's thigh. Anubis is behind her. Everybody's having the time of their lives. Everybody comes glory. It's fantastic. And, as they are sort of after glowing, Nefruspec is doing the aftercare stuff. Anubis reaches a hand into the mess, sort of mixes it all together. Mm. I know. And does some godly magic. And the next thing you know, everything looks fine. The sarcophagus is fixed. The mummy is fixed. The canopic jars are, are back in one piece. And they have to say goodbye. Anubis has to call Nefruspec like three times to get her to leave Amanda mm -mm. because she they really she really likes her and she tells her I will see you again in the afterlife one day I will see you again we'll get coffee yeah and probably have sex some more yeah. and uh then they walk into the shadows in the corner of the museum and disappear and Paul comes around the corner and she's like, oh, thank God they didn't actually take my dress off. She sort of like writes herself and like fixes her hair and throws her coat on real quick. And is like, I'm all good. Thanks for the tour. I'm going to go now. And she leaves. I hope there's no cameras in this museum. Right. My, in this unfinished exhibit, maybe there aren't. I that, don't know. That could be. Either way, she just sort of ends it. That's it. She leaves. I think they, they walk out and... <laughs> Fiend. <laughs> Fiend. Paula has, like, a cheap mummy on a string, and she, like, comes out of the shadows and is like, woo and they end it with a pun. Because, <laughs> again, that's how Latrexa ends all of her books. She ends them with a pun. So that was Mummy Sorry. Mummy Sorry. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> I, I, have ha I have needed to read that book for a no, year. it's fine. And it was so funny and it was so good because of course it was because it was Latrexa. So it was legitimately good and the, the sex was good and the BDSM and kink are always really good. But also it's ridiculous. You know? Yeah. The best. I have one more quick Perfect. insane one. All right. This last one. I am not really. Uh, Y'all aren't ready. You aren't ready, my love. Nobody's ready. Seventy six episodes. I ain't ready for shit. Nobody's ready somehow. for shit. Yep. So this. Thank you so much to Unfortunate Reads, for her fantastic and comprehensive list of books that she has read, <laughs> so I could find something. Is Mating with the Mantis? <laughs> oh God. By M. J. Edwards. Oh no. No. It is available for $2.99 or through Kindle Unlimited. It is 24 pages long. It's perfectly ridiculous. I loved this book. It was deeply absurd. It leaned into the absurdism. It tried to be absurd. It knew exactly what it was. Okay. One of the comments or one of the reviews, the, one of the one-star reviews for this book said it read like it was written by a man. 
yes it did but on purpose because <laughs> yeah her breasts did jiggle boobily like her her boobies jiggled like two strawberry jellos. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It's the I, second time I've heard that phrase today. Or the well, it's the first time I heard it out loud. It is also written in uh, the book that I'm reading. Oh, breasted boobily. Uh, I'm boobing boobily. Yeah, is what one of the uh, care. But it was a, the woman with the boobs that yeah. said it. Yeah, that's a that's sort of a meme from the from the yeah. the tumblr world of you know when men write women yeah you know they breast boobily down the stairs and things like that um so there's a lot of that i also really enjoyed there were several times in this book where they he mj whoever they are used the same word in a sentence over and over again on purpose to point out the fact that that's what they were doing okay so like my eyes stung and I rubbed my eyes when my eyes were like <laughs> on purpose <laughs> and it's hilarious it's so funny okay so the triple t's for this one I just wrote strap in motherfucker because <laughs> I can't tell you anything else really um actually her notes just it's brackets and then it just says confused brain <laughs> confused brain <laughs> yeah <laughs> huh? Huh? um so strap in, motherfucker. Our FMC in this book, her name is Dr. Liberty J.T. Penningforthy the Third. <laughs> what are we what are we calling her for short? Sure? She calls herself Dr. Penningforthly. Okay. I don't so Dr. P. Dr. P. Dr. P. Dr. Penningforthly is attracted to mantises and has been since her childhood. And in the reading of this I thought perhaps some people should go to hell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but not you, MJ. But not you, MJ. But <laughs> the woman who developed her first crush on her dad's praying mantis when she was a teenager, a mantis named Gordon. And then when she was in her 20s, she lost her virginity to a guy that she met on a dating app named Gordon. <laughs> because his name was Gordon. Oh, okay. I mean, and she had like seven orgasms because she was thinking about Gordon being Gordon the Mantis instead. <laughs> all, right, all right. I can't. So I, the progression of her finding and then losing the next big sexual thrill of mantises was truly unsettling. <laughs> I was on I was upsettled. I was upset and unsettled <laughs> the entire time. I did not like it at all. But um so eventually uh what she what she says is that she became a professor so that she could get access to many many mantises. That's what it says in the book. Um and that after she got her job one of the things she did was fill a bathtub with pre with mantises and let them crawl all over her and like it was one of the most incredible experiences of her life and that she would do it again mm -hmm. except that it, it, too many mantises drowned the bathtub had no water in it when they started i'm sorry <laughs> you gonna elaborate further on this i don't think that i have do or can yeah or should yeah it's probably i th i think i think a horrifying horrifying implication I, I think if you do that J jim podcast will storm in here jim. and take us off the podcast airwaves i'm so sorry jim the inventor of the podcast jim podcast will <laughs> come in here and complain lo loudly about what we've done to his beloved medium so let's just not. <laughs> let's just not. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> let's just move on from all of this because a lot of this is just her fantasizing about and thinking about the various sexual things she's done with mantises. But so she goes into work one day and another scientist whose name is Terry, <laughs> Terry the scientist, is wheeling in a big box. And she's like, what's in there? And he's like, promise you won't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> It's an embiggening ray. It makes things bigger. And she's like, no shit. Does it work on Manti? <laughs> it's like, their very first thought was, I'm going to make a mantis big and I'm going to fuck that mantis. That was her 
first thought. Can I point it right at its dick? <laughs> so she does. She waits all day until everybody else has left the building. She, she's comically popping up behind <laughs> plants and water coolers. She's waiting for people to leave. She was waiting. <laughs> and so when, the fi- when finally the last person leaves the lab, she closes the doors, she locks them, and then she she hacks into the security system and the description of that was the funniest thing I'd ever read because it literally said I tapped a few buttons I'm in I said and I <laughs> I just love the idea click click I'm in click I'm in <laughs> so funny okay what was so- the password funnily enough <laughs> enter yeah it was, just pa- enter. It, was, it was password no. it was password. no not even just press enter yeah i just winked at the computer and it let me in <laughs> there are a lot of highlights in this book which i am going through right now to sort of keep a track of what happens in it and i've just read <laughs> one of the popular highlights so what was a poor horny magnificently chested but vaginally dry insectologist supposed to do <laughs> <laughs> okay I've- okay if you read this book and gave it a one star review, shame on you. So anyway, she waits till everybody leaves and then she goes to her wall of mantises because she has a wall of mantis tanks and she gets out <laughs> one of her favorites. The cutest one. Gordon 23. She's been naming <laughs> all of her mantises Gordon. She's a freak. She's weird. I love her. Old G23. Hell yeah. She takes him into the embiggening ray room, wherever that is, puts him down on a thingy like on a tray and she's like i I can figure this out i'm a scientist it's what it whatever there's a big button and it says shoot on it so she just pushes the button and it says shoot and then there's a bunch of noises and a big flash and bang and she's very disoriented and then she's when she sort of gains her senses back her eyes hurt really bad for a second so she tries to rub them but she stabs herself in the eye (laughs) <laughs> with her claw because she's a fucking mantis now instead of turning gordon 23 into a giant mantis she turned herself into a mantis size mantis i'm there's another way to say it i'm upset i am upset i'm upset to hear what you just said i am upset but not because I also think this is the only ethical way she could do this. That's that's true. But to to quote our son, I don't like the thing you just said. I don't. <laughs> it's true. He says that shit all the time. But when he says it, he's saying it to us because we just told him <laughs> to go wash his hands. To go wash his hands. <laughs> Or to stop playing games yeah. or to go to bed. Stop picking his nose. Stop picking his nose. Be like, I don't like the thing you just said. Yeah? Really? Really? Well, I didn't like seeing you two knuckles deep into your own freaking nostril there. So, yeah. you know, I guess we're on a level playing field now. <laughs> so, anyway, the only ethical thing that could be done here is that she become a mantis. Because a giant mantis still would not be capable of consent in that capacity. But if she's a mantis, she's a mantis. <laughs> it's whatever. And Gordon 23 is like, I'm here and I'm horny. And they have sex about it. As mantises, she has mantis sex. And it, it, she is not really like in control of the body at this point. She's living this experience, but this is all instinctual. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah great. Bug brain stuff that's happening. Great. I'm so glad yeah. that now... She's going to go with her mantis instincts. <laughs> exactly. And um, she has, you know, just like uncountable numbers of orgasms until eventually Gordon 23 starts like biting at her head. And she's like, oh, he's telling me that I have to finish. Like, I have to finish this now. I have to eat his head. And then she does. She eats his head. And she is sad, but also having orgasm after orgasm after orgasm. Okay, see, I, I could a praying mantis. I in that moment I thought I I thought perhaps I had taken something and I was having some kind of episode. I don't know. When you said she was sad, <laughs> I was like, oh. I can relate. She's sad. But yeah. then when you said that she was also having all these orgasms, I went, oh, that's 
<laughs> that's where we're relate dif- to that. that. No, that's where we're different no, in that this is moment. Not, that is not normal. No. Anyway, so she f- eats Gordon. She eats Gordon's head. And then um, when all is said and done, she does not have the capacity or ability to turn herself back into a person. But Terry comes in a few minutes later, <laughs> the other scientist Terry, and he's like, oh, what are you doing out of your cage, little fella? She, he picks her up and he takes her back to the wall of mantises. But instead of putting her in the female tank, he puts her in the male tank. And she's like, this is going to be very bad for research, but very good for me. <laughs> Line up, boys. <laughs> She's rubbing her little mantis legs together. <laughs> Grooming herself like a cat because yeah. they do that. Praying mantises sort of groom themselves. Anyway, so it was Mating with the Mantis by MJ Edwards. I want to know why they don't have some kind of prize, award, statue. <laughs> It was a work of literary genius. I, I, I want to read a bunch of shit. Like, I want to read a bunch of the things that were written in this book because it was so funny, but I won't. Well, uh, I would nominate. be rude. I would nominate this for a Nebula. Oh, golly. Yes, absolutely. Or, or a Saturn nebula. or whatever science fiction. Because, I mean, this is, first of all, it's definitely science fiction. Mm-hmm. It could be both. It could be smut and science fiction. But, yeah, that was. Oh. Yeah, it was a lot. Oof. Twas much. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I can't even fucking transition right now. I know, right? Just the next segment. Yeah. Just tell, tell people what you like. to Tell some, tell people something you like right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, what are you into? What am I into? Um, what am I into? What should I go with? Why don't we go with What You Want by Lawrence? Oh, yeah. I like that song a lot. Yeah. It's it was really a, good. It's it was, a jam. It was. We listened to it last night out in the garage during our uh, nightly smoke sesh. And, and, then, and then it kept playing on that album. And it was really good. It was a lot of throwback, you know, kind of jams on there. That was really good. Yeah. So I think we'll listen to them a little bit more. Yeah. Plus, that girl's voice is just insane. It was really insane. good. It was really good. So good. What are you into? Well, it, it will probably come uh, as no surprise to you, but it might come as a surprise to the listeners or not. I don't know. Uh, but this week I am very into 21 Pilots. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been aware of them for many years. They've been around for, gosh, 13-ish years. Been a little bit longer, I think, than that. Maybe almost 15 years now. But I had never really heard much of them beyond like whatever I might have heard in on the radio or whatever. And I always enjoyed it. But... My good friend Sean, he, him and his entire family, mm-hmm. so him, his wife, uh, their oldest child, and then their their twins, they all, we all went to see them, 21 Pilots, last weekend in Detroit. That's where I was going last weekend. Uh, he had a free ticket, and he was like, hey, come check this out. But it, the, the, the reason we did this is because Sean and I are going to do a podcast about 21 Pilots. Uh, and he was like, come, come check out the show. You have to see this. You have to see this. You have to be a part of it. And he's like into the, lo- like there's lore, mm-hmm. like they have lore, which I, I, I don't fully understand. I don't know how I feel about all the lore yet, but I must say that 21 pilots, now that I've immersed myself in their music, I understand their wild level of success. Um, they're, they're so they're, there's like one measure of success where only three musical artists in the world have ever achieved it. One is 21 pilots. The other, uh, the other two are the Beatles and Elvis. Mm-hmm. Like that's how <laughs> yep. and I, I can't remember what specific thing it is, but I read it to you and mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's insane. And they're phenomenal. They're phenomenally talented. They put on an amazing show. I've never, I've never been to a musical performance. I've never been to a concert like that. It was just Josh and Tyler on stage. I thought I was going to hate that they were doing backing tracks. And Mm -hmm. I mean, they were still playing some instruments live, but they had primarily backing tracks. Didn't matter. They were so much energy. There was so much theatricality. It was phenomenal. And I've since immersed myself in their catalog and I get it. I, they're, they're phenomenal. And I, I can't wait to, uh, make this podcast with Sean where we're not just talking about 21 pilots, but there's a a larger thematic concept to it that we're going to discuss throughout all of that. But for the purposes of this segment, I'm going to link you to uh, what is at present my favorite 21 pilot song uh, from their 2021 release. Uh, I can't remember the name of the album, but the album cover is cool. Uh, The song's called Mulberry street. Yes. So I will link to the video for that what do we have on tap well, i'm for next trying week? to decide right 
now. Perfect. Let's go with that. Next week, we are reading Wed to the Lich by Layla Fay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm going based on cover alone. Because look at that guy. Ooh, that was, yes. that was pretty fucking awesome. All of the cover art on these books, the um, Arranged Monster Mates series, the cover art is gorgeous. That is really fucking cool. Anyway, so that's what we'll be reading next week. Wed to the Lich. In the meantime. I'm stealing my line. I know. In the meantime. <laughs> You can find us on social media. We are on Instagram, TikTok, and threads at Cheap Smut. If you would like to send us an email, I dare you. CheapSmutPod at gmail.com. If uh, you click on the show notes, the top link will be a link to... Uh, are all of these on Cassie's list? I don't think so. All right, so. I'll just create a bunch of links. I'll create links for all these books in our link tree. They are not affiliate links. We do not get any money for those. But if you think that we uh, are worthy of a little bit of your financial support, and by a little bit, I literally mean $1 a month or $12 a year, we would greatly appreciate it. And you can do that on Patreon like these fine folks have. Raven, Natasha Bear, Desiree Rodriguez, Local Mind Flayer, Seattle, number 42, Bookworm, Vincent Soltenfuss, Katsune Inc., Cassie, Cassandra, Brian S., April D. Berry, Leah Legend, Dana Goddard, Gemma, Lady Squishy Buns, Tia Esk, Rob Gatika, Angela McNichols, Katie Hurd, Gwendolyn Harper, Seneca O., and Rebecca K. I read these in order as uh, people joined, and I love that Cassie and Cassandra were just right next to each other. That's so perfect. The music that you hear in this and every episode is called Nostalgia by Makai Beats. You can find it along with thousands of other songs free of charge for you to use at the Free Music Archive, freemusicarchive.org. Listener, remember, if there is a book in you, write it. And if there's fucking in it, I'll read it. And then she will come on this show and explain it to me for your entertainment. No matter how weird it is. Goodbye. Goodbye.